What's going on, everyone? Well, you look radishing today. Let's go. Welcome to another episode right here on the Am I Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking about how to take your radishes to the next level. Let's go. So when it comes to radishes, we love growing them. It's one of our favorite crops to grow in early spring and late fall, simply because of the fact they are fast to mature. There's so many different varieties you can be growing and they are really simple to grow. So let's talk about the first thing you can be doing to taking your radish game to the next level. So the first thing you can be doing to taking your radish game to the next level is making sure that you don't add too much nitrogen to your soil. Now, I know that seems counterintuitive. Us as gardeners, we always wanna make sure that the soil is as fertile as possible. But if you have too much fertility, what you'll find is you'll grow beautiful radish tops, but no radish roots. And that's what you're kind of growing them for. So to avoid this problem, what we do is we do add a little bit of fertilizer, but we mainly focus on just adding compost. Compost is very balanced. It's not super high in nitrogen. It's more of a balanced fertilizer for your plants. Very, very gentle. And it's gonna ensure that your plants are not uptaking too much of that nitrogen, which leads to a lot of leaf growth. So because radishes make such a good early spring crop and late fall crop, they can actually grow in soil that's been slightly depleted. In early spring, you have a lot of snow and rain that tends to wash some nutrients from the soil. That's actually kind of good for your radishes. Now, it's not great for overall soil fertility, but it's really good in the sense that any excess nitrogen will kind of be washed out of the soil. They make a wonderful cover crop for that exact reason. And then in the late fall, they also make a wonderful cover crop or a crop rotation because of the fact that after you've grown something like a tomato or a pepper or something like that that takes a lot of nutrients out of the soil, it's, it's a really great crop to grow because they don't need that much nutrients to form that root, which is what you're looking for. So try early spring, try late fall, focus simply on the compost, making sure the soil is loose and well draining and not so much on the nutrient side. The second thing you can do to take your radish game to the next level is by thinning. Way too many gardeners don't thin their radishes and they end up competing for space. If there's too many radishes growing in too small of an area, you're simply gonna end up with spindly roots and a lot of tops. So what you're looking for when you're thinning your radishes is you want about one to one and a half inches spacing. You can go a little more than that, but I find that any more than that, and you're really not growing enough in the same amount of space as you could be. So I'm just thinning these out to about one inch. Now these tops can be used in salads. They make wonderful little uh, radish microgreens kind of peppery and uh, really, really delicious. But you wanna make sure you come in here and thin them out because if they're, too, if they're too crowded, they're not gonna produce roots. Now, the third thing you can do to growing amazing radishes is simply by planting at the right time. So many gardeners that I know of plant either way too late in the season in the spring or way too early in the fall. If your seasons are not the right temperature, you're gonna find that your radishes are gonna to go to seed or bolt way too fast. That means they're gonna focus on forming seeds rather than roots. They're also gonna be very spicy, way more spicy than they would be in cooler weather. And because it's typically a lot hotter and drier, your plants are gonna be a lot more stressed, meaning you're not gonna get the most ideal harvest. So by waiting until the nights are into the, into the 40s, I prefer to make sure the nights are around 48, 49 degrees, and the daytime temperatures are not exceeding in the mid 60s, that really allows for really slow growth, nice root production, and not a whole lot of seed production and stress on your plants. All right, the fourth tip to taking your radish game to the next level is by succession planting. By succession planting, you're not gonna end up with all of your harvest all at once. One of the biggest mistakes I've made is by planting everything all at once, and then when everything is ready to harvest all at once, you look at your harvest and you're like, what am I gonna do with 20 pounds of radishes? So by eliminating everything happening all at once, you're gonna be able to enjoy your harvest longer. And if there tends to be infrequencies in the weather, especially in fall, where sometimes you can have kind of a, an Indian summer as they call it, where it gets really warm for a few weeks, it helps to kind of uh, buffer some of that potential error. And so because you're starting say, two rows of radishes and then waiting three to five days and starting another two to f uh, two rows of radishes, waiting another three to five days and starting another two rows of radishes, instead of getting everything all at once within 25 days and having to have everything go according to plan, you're getting two rows of radishes, then five days later, you're getting two more rows of radishes, then five days later, you're getting two more rows of radishes. And so it's able to kind of, you're prolonging the harvest but you're also giving yourself some wiggle room in case uh, things don't really go according to plan, which 
If you're a gardener, you know that things rarely go according to plan. Fifth and final tip is water frequently. Radishes, because of the fact that you are focusing on what is considered a modified root, that root is actually a storage vessel that holds water. And it's not actually something that will stay the same size. It's not like a potato that will stay the same size. It actually will get smaller if the plant dehydrates. And so because it's a water storing vessel, carrots are exactly the same way, you wanna make sure that you keep lots of moisture in the soil, and that's going to ensure that you have bigger radishes. Now, radishes, they actually will split if they're kept too dry as well, and split radishes will rot a lot faster, and also they invite things like bugs into your garden. So when it comes to fall, we typically have a lot of rain in fall, but anytime the soil is dry, I do make sure to come in and kind of spot water so that my radishes can do the best that they can. Now, the final thing I will say is that there are so many varieties tons of varieties of radishes, and there's so many different characteristics. You have daikons, which are really, really long and slender, and then you have something like cherry bell, which is like a cute little adorable sweet radish, and then you have something a little more spicy like a lady slipper. There are tons of different varieties of radishes, and I'd recommend trying them all, or at least a lot of them, so you can find which ones you like best. There's also ones that are better for the leafy greens, which are wonderful as well. So do your research, find which ones grow best in your garden or grow best for your lifestyle and try them so that way you can actually experience all of the, uh, the amazing benefits that radishes can provide. They're one of my favorite crops to grow simply because it's such a fast turnaround crop and because of the fact that it kind of brings in the spring gardening season and you can close out the fall gardening season with, you know, with a win because they're so simple to grow, they're so fast to mature, and uh, they're a lot of fun to grow as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you all learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow bigger. Take care.